If you're getting a new electric car or your existing EV charger is due to be replaced, you're probably looking at the market of EV chargers and thinking, God, there is a huge amount of choice because there is. Nearly every single firm on the planet these days makes an electric vehicle charger. Now, luckily for you, I have tested, reviewed, taken apart all the EV chargers mainly on the, on the market today in the UK and some of them are sold abroad. But I have a really good understanding of what makes a good feature, what makes a good unit on an EV charger. And this is my ultimate guide of what you need to make sure you find in an EV charger before you hand over your cash. Now this guide is constantly evolving over at evnick.com forward slash charge and I'm still waiting for some new chargers for 2024 to drop in my post box so I can take them apart and review for an a, basically a top 10 of looks, design, features, quality, what they do. And if you're an EV charger manufacturer and you haven't yet sent me your unit, it's not a unit that I currently have off you, then I suggest that you drop it in my inbox ASAP because this video will be getting made very, very shortly. Now this video isn't gonna name any brands or specific companies because at any point these brands or companies could release new chargers and there could be brands that I haven't mentioned that do exist. So I, for interest of fairness, this is gonna be a non-branded video. There's no sponsor of this video. There's no brands have asked me to make this video. This video is purely for you, the viewer, to look out for for these features. Now some features of chargers I think are pretty much useless and some features I think are very important. This video will be listed in what I think is the least important to the most important feature. And the most important feature is my personal experience for a personal customer is the most important thing that you have on your charger. Now my least important feature on this is aesthetics. This should be the last thing on the list. You should narrow down all the other things on my list first and then look at the most aesthetical unit from what is left. But I do get why some people like a nice shiny box outside the house rather than an ugly, bulky, you know, not too attractive box on the side of the house. But bear in mind, if that pretty box doesn't do any other features, you might as well have just put a pretty box around your existing charger and use that instead. So bear in mind that there is some new units that are pure style with absolutely hardly any features. The next most important feature is to do really with IP rating. Now, all units in the UK sold hit a certain IP rating that they can be used outside and they, you know, the fine were being rained on, etc. There is some other units that can substand a pressure washer hitting it, which might be useful if you tend to wash your car near where you charge it. And there are some other units that are pretty much submergible underwater. Now that would, in my mind, only really be applicable if you live in a coastal area, which is getting very harsh sea, dirty conditions that could damage the inside of a unit, in which case having a unit that could be submerged underwater basically means it's gonna hold all those elements out and it's gonna have a longevity. But if you're in the UK, pretty much all units can be put outside. Just bear in mind, like I said, if you're gonna be washing your car near it, maybe just check that it's got a slightly higher IP rating just in case you hit it with a jet washer. Next, you need to consider how your charger is gonna to connect to the server. Now, some use mobile signals, which if you are in a complete black spot in the UK, which at the moment is extremely rare, you'd have to know that no mobile signal works in you know any network, not even one bar, it's gonna be very, very unlikely. Or if you're in an underground car park where you charge your car, that could happen. You could have a complete zero black spot. Now there is mobile phone buffer connection things that you can connect to help that. But if you have no mobile signal, you're gonna to have to rule out the ones that do mobile signal. Next, we have units that do Wi-Fi connection. So connect via the Wi-Fi. And again, you might not have Wi-Fi signal, but again, you can get Wi-Fi extenders. Some links down below in the description if you're interested in them. And then next we have Ethernet connection. And again, this is not a one fits all. Some people won't really get Ethernet to the where the charge point is. Some people will find it easy to use Wi-Fi, and other people will prefer the mobile option because it might be you know remote to where the house is, etc. So no one fits all, just make sure whichever one you go for is the one that's most convenient for you. Now a feature that many people think they need on a charger is solar. Now you'll find out the vast majority of EV chargers, especially here in the UK and Europe, are compatible with solar matching. So they have one CT clamp that measures the solar export import of the grid and they can match it. Some use two CT clamps and some units even have three CT clamps, one extra for your battery. So this isn't important. You, you can basically do solar matching off one CT. The extra two or three CTs, they're just purely for basically facts in one app off that company. But you can use solar matching off one CT. Now worth mentioning, unless you have a lot of solar panels, 
you might not be able to charge off your solar because there is a minimum ampage that your car needs to charge at from the solar before it just doesn't work. So if you're in a really old or very, very few panels, you might not have enough solar to run your house and to charge your car. Also, at the moment here in the UK, you won't be better financially off on using your solar. You're actually better exporting it. There's a video top right you can see about that if you want to learn more about that. Now, the next thing is not a feature of any charger. It's more something that you need to know when you get your EV charger installed or if you're getting a home storage battery installed. Try and have the EV charger on its own separate dedicated circuit. Now, the advantage of this is most car chargers, batteries and solar companies don't talk to each other. And the problem with this is what can happen is your battery could be charged up by solar or off-peak energy and your car plugs in and your battery then diverts that energy into the car. If you have it on a separate circuit, you can hide the EV charger from uh, and the battery from seeing each other. And if they don't see each other, the battery won't drain into the car. There's also ways of moving away the CT clamps to do this, but just bear in mind that when you get your install done and you have got a battery, try and mention this to the electrician at the time. If you want to send this part of the video to them, it might explain what they need to do a bit better. Now, this is the most important feature in my mind, and that is you make sure that your charger can be controlled by your energy company. Now, it's different for every other person in the world, so make sure that the charger can be controlled by an energy company in your area. Now, some cars can be doing it with the API. I suggest you use the charger instead, and we'll tell you why in a minute. But basically, that electricity company will stop and chart your car now you can go to octopus energy's tariff which is evnick.com forward slash energy there's a link there to sign up and you get 50 pound when you switch over but if you use octopus energy they pay you 15p export you get seven and a half p import with certain ev chargers and also it means that you're going to save a small fortune now if you're wondering why i don't want to use the api see this video here and if you're wondering why you're better to export your energy at the moment see this video here